Um, I grew up in Philippines. I came from a poor family, so I had seven siblings. And after um, living with them, my parents separated. So I live without a dad. So my mom raised us. And because we're so poor, I had to be separated from my other older siblings. So I live with my, with my two younger siblings, with my mom and my uncle. It's a bit normal at first, even if uh, I came from a broken family. Um, my uncle was living with us that time, and he's the one who was taking care of us after the school, so things happened. So sometimes we usually um, warn the people to be careful with the strangers, but we never t told them to be careful even, the mo even inside the house. There is a monster. There is a monster. I was eight years old when my uncle sexually abused me, and I was so naive. I did not know that or it was wrong. It, I think it was one week until he told me that don't tell this to anybody. When I heard that, I know there's something wrong. So I froze because I was scared already. And the last time um, he sent my two younger siblings to the neighbor, so I was, I was left alone with him. And I wanted to run, but I cannot run away because I was eight years old. So um, it happened again. After that, after that day, the next day, I had a repression. So repression is like um, involuntary shutdown of your memory that I totally forgot that one week of hellish thing experience. So I went back to live like a normal child. When I was 14 years old, I had a nightmare that my that my uncle was taking me to the deepest part of ocean, that terrified me. So when I woke up, there are flashes of memories, flashes of scenes in my head, and I tried to, to shrug it off that, no, it didn't happen, but it was so consistent that, oh yeah, th there's something happened in, from my past. But uh, I think it was too late for me to, to be scared or to get angry because um, I already grew up. And I met Jesus um, um, when I was still young because Jesus has an easy access in my heart because I was really longing for a father and here he is. He's offering himself as, as my dad. Yeah, I became a Christian and most of them, they will say that forgive your enemy. So I forgave. But still, you know, there, there's still broke, um, brokenness in my heart. I was broken as a daughter my femininity is also broken. So when I was in college already, and still pretend that everything is okay, until such time that um, I became a nurse already. So to rebel against God, I chose Saudi Arabia. I said, oh, I will go to Ch Saudi. I was so angry with God that I gave my body to different men. I allowed these different men, different nationalities to use my body. And the last stroke was my, um, my ex-boyfriend's friend raped me again. And after that assault, that second assault, um, I looked at the mirror and I cried without tears. And I, I kept on doing it. I kept on um, destroying my life. And one time, I was screaming in my heart that all I wanted is to be loved. Is that too much to ask? I was screaming to God, even if I, I, I was not praying that time, but that's the only prayer that I said to God, that is that too much to ask, to ask for love? But still, um, love for me was um, too, um, too rare. I was not really making an effort for my relationship because the first part of my, of my relationship with God is all about me seeking Him, exerting effort, but the second part of my Christian walk, it was all God um, 
or orchestrating everything. So when I went here in Canada to um, process my work, my work permit, I, I was supposed to go to U.S., but I was refused. So I, I told my sister that then I will go to Israel because in my heart, I knew that I need to go to Israel. So um, I booked a flight and went to Israel. So when I was in Israel, um, God led me again to read the Psalms 18. And that was the first time that I saw God mad, but not to me, but to the people that took advantage of me. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and He saved me from my enemies. The ropes of death entangled me, floods of destruction swept over me. The grave wrapped its ropes around me, death laid a trap in my path. But in my distress, I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I prayed to my God for help. He heard me from his sanctuary. My cry to him reached his ears. He opened the heavens and came down. Dark storms, clouds were beneath his feet. Then he reached down from heaven and rescued me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemies, from those who hated me and were too strong for me. So when I read this, like, Wow, God was like a daddy that he's so furious of, of things that happened to me. He allowed me to be, to be um, transparent to him, to be honest. And yeah, we, we deal with my emotion again because yeah, um, I heard that forgive your enemies like this, but nobody told me what to do with my wounds. So um, before God, I asked him this, um, question, big question of where were you when that little girl was abused? Where were you when I was abused in Saudi? Where were you? And, and God was not surprised by my questions because He knew exactly where those questions are coming from. He doesn't see us in a crowd. He see me as me. As, as if I'm the only one in the whole earth, in the whole world. So when I was in, um, when I was in Israel, he, Jesus told me that the, the journey to the cross did start in the Via Dolorosa. The Via Dolorosa. It started in the Mount Gethsemane when he prayed for me until his sweat became blood fighting for me. And then uh, we walked to the Via Dolorosa and he showed me where, uh, where he fell. And he told me that you're my motivation why I keep on rising up. Like I use my body to, sh to, to catch the bullet that was supposed to be for you. So uh, I felt so loved. God, he paid for the real price with his blood. And that's why um, I, now I, I can like, um, I can keep my mouth shut talking about Jesus and and sometimes I can I can I can say my my past my morbid past without crying but when I will come to the part where where Jesus rescued me so from brokenness to wholeness in Christ so I feel like I'm in a self self actualization that I'm complete with Christ And this is not my story. This is God's story of his redemption of my life.